What's up, everybody? And it is Saturday, and it is 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 12 noon Central, 11, 10 a.m. Pacific. Yeah, I had to get it right. All righty. So um, in the grand scheme of things, we are here today as a panel of individuals who love, who love, love, love um, our independent artists, and we definitely want to provide you with some substance. Um, we understand that you um, love the glitz and glam. You know, you love the drip. You love the money to the ear. You love the chains. You love the cars. You love the butt naked hoes. You love all of that. But we are here to talk to you about another B, not bitches, but business. And so, um, I have an amazing group of individuals here and um, y'all already know I'm Loudmouth Lily, definitely always going to be that way. You can either like it or despise it, but you definitely will respect it. And so um, we have Frank Mosley, the third, we have Mr. Terry Moore, we have Sheena Palmer and Derek McKinney. And so I'm just going to get them to introduce themselves, ladies first, and then we'll have Frank, Derek, and Mr. Terry. Hello, 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 everyone. Hola, mi gente. Hey, people. Um, my name is Sheena Palmer. I am the owner and founder of SQ Productions Public Relations Agency. We've been around for going on 13 years. We made 12 years recently, so now we're hitting into our 13th year of representing the underdogs in many of the industries that you guys love so much, be it fashion, music, nonprofit, education, or sports. We're there for you. Oh, we can't forget film and entertainment too, right, Lily? Uh, <laughs> so I am based in New York, Richmond, Virginia, and LA. So just check us out at SCP underscore LLC on, in this, on Instagram. Good afternoon. I'm Frank Mosley. I am the CEO of Sky4 Records. Sky4 Records came to existence. 2018, we now power ID 104 Radio, Sky 4 Graphics Studio, um, and we run these entities for independent artists only. Um, we look for artists in our community, in our community, that want to do something different, that want to do something other than shine. Um, so we show them the business, we show them the light, and then hopefully they grow from there. Any uh, particular order or? Oh yeah, Mr. Terry and then Mr. Derry. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Terry Moore. Uh, originally from New York, live in Atlanta now. My background is over 30 years in the music industry. I started my career in 1986. Uh, I've been very fortunate and blessed to work with some amazing people such as MC Light, Queen Latifah, Will Smith, when he was with uh, Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince, Jada Pinkett, uh, Kenny Smith, when he was a Houston Rocket, also worked on the Self Destruction record with KRS One and Jive Records. Also worked with uh, Audio Two and Top Billing. My background primarily started out doing PR and marketing. Uh, right now, what I do is a lot of music business consulting, as well as I've uh, been an independent rep with Legal Shield for a couple of years, helping artists get some type of affordable uh, legal access without paying a lot and retainer fees. Also, a public speaker. I've also written for Billboard Magazine, Write On Magazine, and Word Up mag Magazine back in the day. Turn it over to you. I appreciate the time. All right. And the man, Helen from Houston, Texas, Derek McKinney. Good afternoon, everybody. Like I said, I'm Derek McKinney from Houston. Um, I own a record company called Loud Music. Loud is an acronym for Live Out Your Dreams. Uh, we manage the rappers Lil Flip, Zero. Um, the R&B artist Bobby Valentino is signed to our label. We have uh, up and coming artists like Cody Blake, Skyra Bliss, Tim Ned. Tim is a producer. He's produced for R. Kelly, Nipsey Hussle, CSI New York, Love Hip Hop Atlanta. Um, just a, a, a record company and a management company, man. We have a, an event called Loud Fest. It's an indie artist music festival. Um, 200 different artists from across the country, three, three days, three different stages. We average about 3,000 people a day. And we also have the Loud Radio and Press Junket that's coming up in June. 80 media outlets in one room, a radio and press room for indie artists, managers, publishers, writers, producers from across the globe. They uh, come out for it. So 
that's me and that's who I am. All righty. And so guys, we thank you so much for those um, creatives who are in the room with us, as well as those creatives who um, are watching on YouTube and Facebook. And so um, I'm not going to say too much right now. I'm going to go ahead and pass the mic to Frank. And Frank is going to talk to you a little bit about um, the importance of, you know, maintaining your independence, but what labels are here to do to support you relative to backing you. And we're not talking about financially backing you. We're talking about collectively backing you. Frank, have at it. All right. Let's talk financial first. And we're going to talk real quick because I won't talk your, your ears off. So the major labels, they're there to put money in your pocket. And I hate to say it this way, but it's almost a trap. Uh, once you sign to the label, the label is giving you a loan. All right. The label is giving you a loan to produce your record, to market your record, to do whatever it is to process your, your product. All right, so they can sell and make their money back. The issue is we have a standard where you got to go get that rap kit. You got to go get the gold chain, the, the, the diamonds, the whatever, whatever. And your advance you spend on that other than making your money. That's the trap. That's what I call a trap anyway. So once you spend that money and your record goes great or flops, owe that money back plus interest. All right. And let's say you need to double up. You need to make another record and they give you more. And then you're constantly in a trap to where you're almost not making money back. You're making money. Your only money that you made was that advance that you got, was that loan that you got. What independents try to do is what I try to do as an independent is not give you some big old crazy advance. What I'm going to do is help you get your, your music to the marketplace. I'm going to show you the business. I'm going to show you the record. Like any other artist does, I'm going to show you how to make your money just like any other business does. You know, it's almost like a, you buy stuff in a store that's cheaper, you sell it at a higher price and you make a profit. You want to spend your budget on producing a record without a guarantee that that money is going to come back. You're always going to be in a losing profit. My issue is, and I shouldn't say issue, my thing is I'm trying to teach you that from the gate from ground one. I'm gonna show you exactly what to do, from the basics in the beginning. So, you know, you, you learn the business from hand. It's hard when you don't know. A lot of people in this business won't show you. You know, they, they tell you that the, the game cost. That's trash to me. I'm gonna teach you what I know and I'm gonna learn as we go. You see what I'm saying? Because it's other people that know a lot more than I do. And I keep growing and learning every day. And what I learn and know, I'm going to teach the artist that's under me. That's really it. That's really the game in itself. All right. And I don't really want to talk your ear off because I'm not that guy. He's not. He's not. But definitely a wealth of knowledge. And guys, Frank is that person that you want to go to for your digital marketing. He's that person that you want to hit up and say, listen, I want to shoot this video. I know you told me stop spending all this money on videos and focus on content. But if that's the case, help me make a little bit of content or let me make this video, break it down into 90 days worth of content and then show me where to put my money for ads. Stop paying for press and get you some ads, run your own ads on social media. But anyways, all right, now, <laughs> okay, so now you've heard a little bit about what labels should be doing, keyword, should, okay? I just want you to understand, and Mr. Terry Moore and Derek will probably go here too, the labels are not going to be sending you emails asking you to audition for their event at BET Weekend and then asking you to buy 20 tickets so that you can secure your slot. Labels are not doing that. So please do not be bamboozled by these ads being ran on Instagram. I have yet to see an actual Def Jam executive, I did not say affiliate, or ambassador. I said, I have yet to see a Def Jam executive running an ad on Instagram trying to get you to buy something. I'm just saying. 
But anyways, <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and um, pass the torch. Uh, Derek, I want you to jump in. And um, guys, I need you, once Derek finished, to make sure you jot down Loud Fest TX and go over to Instagram and follow Loud Fest TX. That's L O U D F E S T T X. Every independent filmmaker, artist, makeup artist, hairstylist, anything independent, you need to be there. Instead of going paying $600 to sit on somebody's platform and you don't know what your return on investment going to be other than you getting some likes and followers and 15 seconds of fame, go and invest your $250. Go to Loud Fest and he'll talk a little bit more about that. And he's also going to talk to you about independence, where you really need to be putting your money and the importance of the events that Loud is working with. Derek, have it. So, um, like I said, the Loud Radio and Press Junket, June 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Uh, June 2nd is the Welcome to Houston party hosted by Pandora Radio. Uh, my guy, J1, who's the head of hip hop uh, for Pandora, will be in attendance and support that event. Um, then Saturday, um, starts our actual event from 1 to 6 p.m. is a radio and press room. So it's 80 media outlets in one room at tables. It's, 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 um, it's a music business speed dating session, I should say. So indie artists can walk in and meet with every platform, do interviews. Um, some of them sing live on the radio. Some of them perform live right there. They meet with BET. They meet with the labels. They meet with music supervisors. Um, they do interviews with podcasters, bloggers, YouTubers, right there, all in one, one room. So they have two days to meet everybody and network. But we also have activations set up with like Boost Mobile, the Boost the Booth, Boost Mobile Freestyle, Spray Ground Backpack activation, Blocks Media activation, where the artists get to do the, the whole hanging mic performances and capture media and stuff for their, uh, uh, cap capture content for their social media. Then in uh, December, we have Loud Fest. That's our indie music festival where artists submit to perform. They're selected. They get a 12-minute um, a performance spot. Um, and we average about maybe, we average about three thousand post-pandemic, 3,000 people a day um, at the event. And so indie artists get to perform in front of a crowd because we bring in other indie headliners. Like I said, I managed Lil Flip and Zero, and then we brought other other indie artists from the southern regions out to where they're headlining, but they're all on the same stages. I don't put the headliners on one stage and put the other indie artists on this one over here. I mix them all in throughout the day so everybody's in front of a crowd. And we have about 30 media outlets. So if you perform, if you perform on Saturday, you do your media on Sunday. If you perform Sunday, you do media on Saturday. So you come out you perform in front of at least a minimum somewhere between 1,500 to 3,000 people. You do 30 to 40 out media outlets. You have your social media activations, uh, even down to the hoodies and the t-shirts. We put all the artist names on the hoodies, on the t-shirts, create the festival flyers for them. So they get the real experience and it's all indie. So saying all that to say, I make sure that, um, and I'm sorry, even for the festival in December, if you even if you're not selected to perform, every indie artist gets a, a, a kit where you get a 90 day social media strategy. You get your um, you, you get your 90 day social media strategy. You get a Dropbox folder with all your Photoshop templates for your coming soon. You're available now. You get um, all access to the event. You, you still get to do all the media. You still get to do all the interviews. You get everything that the performers get without the performance, if, even if you're not selected. So you win no matter what. Um, so I've always just kind of been an indie label. I just, man, I, I would get all those same emails. Hey, come perform here and do this. Come pay $1,000 and do that. I'm in Texas, so I get flooded with the South by Southwest stuff every year. $700 for a six minute slot and perform for this executive and all of these things. Granted, me being in the industry of 20 years, I know better, but there's so many that don't. Unfortunately, there's people who've been in the industry that's my age, 40 plus, who still fall victim for it or they, they I don't know their reason for doing it. 
but I just want to create events that the artists actually leave with something. They, they, there's no way in hell you can come to our event in June and you, you should leave with at least 80 meetings, interviews, photos with everybody you met with. Your camera person should capture all your behind the scenes content. You got six live performance activations. You got national sponsors, you got brands, you got everything. So if done right, you'll leave with something new to post with a, with a different brand every day for at least 80 to 90 days. That's a whole campaign. So you can create all your behind the scenes footage and put your single behind it and tag Pandora, tag your guy from BET, because you get to meet everybody. So I just wanted to make sure everything we did was purposeful because I don't do shit that my artists don't do. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't put together events and, oh, come do this, come do that. But my artists don't like, no, nah, all my artists go. They do the exact same run everybody else do because it's what we needed. I just decided to open it up to everybody else. So that's from, from an event perspective and from a, 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 a indie label owner. Like I said, I don't sell drugs. I don't have an investor. I don't come from rich parents. So every nickel and dime I spend got to count and it got to reflect somewhere. It got to show up somehow, some way. And I just feel like we, we, we're in hip hop, specifically hip hop, there's so many fictitious things that we're told to pay for and to do. There's so many things that are like, oh, you gotta have a bag and you gotta do this, and you gotta do that. You know, I was talking, I was at an event and there was some DJs on the panel and the DJs was telling the artists, yo, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. And so I was like, man, you a local DJ been in the same club every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for the past 10 years. How can you tell me what's gonna work in Japan? You never been. And, you know, and, and I'll say, man, you know, you tell me the only thing you can give me advice on is what works in your club. Either play the record or don't. You don't dictate shit for me. And, you know, DJs, they're not mixing no more. They're not taking the instrumental and another acapella and breaking records. They just screaming over the mic and dropping bombs and going to the next record. But yet we got to jump through hoops and buy drinks and do all the stuff for this mediocre ass DJ. So I just kind of like, I've just been really outspoken on a lot of things. And, and I think, and I'll say I'm fortunate to, that I can be outspoken because I'm not held captive to nobody. I can, you know, I, I can move how I want to move and, and not feel worried that, oh man, such and such ain't co-signing. I don't, I don't need it. I'm gonna get the job done anyway. And so I think that that's, that's one of the biggest things. It's this fear factor that they put into artists that, it, that it's the music is so bad and so terrible right now because we've allowed dope boys and street money to dictate everything that happens. It's not about quality. It's about, okay, I got, I got the dope boy money and that's my homeboy. He said he want to rap. Cool. We can live the lifestyle and have the look of it. And so it's in Houston. I don't know about anywhere else. The hottest rapper in the club in Houston is always connected to whatever dope boy funding it. So the real talent never gets a shot. And that's why I do my events. I don't care about followers. I, people are like, yo, I'll give you 5,000 let my artists perform. Your artist is terrible, bro. You're gonna kill the event. It's not worth it. You know, so um, we, from a, from a financial side of things, man, there's so many things that, that we're told to pay for and told to do that's just not true. It just is not true, man, it's not true. But when you have guys who do sit in the Def Jam offices, they co-sign a lot of the bullshit because, you know, they're getting kickbacks from their partner who they letting do it. When Please speak on people, it. Please speak on it. Derek, I want you to speak on that. But I also want you, before you speak on that, I want you to go back and explain to them what they have to have though to even register for your events. Yeah, so you got to be registered with BMI ASCAP. You got to have a clean version to your project or your single you got to have a video on YouTube, any major streaming platform. You got to have a, a single release in the past 12 months on the major DSPs. You have a, a press kit. You got to have a bio. You got to have high resolution photos. Um, you got to have an active social media account. For the festival, though, we don't, when, we, when we're picking artists for the festival, we look at your social media. If your social media is full of guns and dope and killing and all of the stuff, that automatically eliminates you. Um, and it's intentional because... I can't have your name on a Boost Mobile flyer and Boost Mobile repost it. And then now they go to your page and they see that and Boost Mobile catching backlash. I lose a sponsor and credibility. 
So we we literally try to weed everybody out, but we just don't turn people away. We we tell them like, man, you got to change this, 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 and this, and we can do it. If you don't have an EPK, here's a website, myfreeepkbuilder.com. Go get an EPK, then come back. If you don't have a clean version, here's a studio. Send them send them your stuff. You'll get they'll do a clean version for you. So we we don't we use it to weed people out, but whatever whatever we're using to eliminate them. We send them the resources and the info to fix it, um, because that that's like, I don't know, that's my give back. Because I don't, I want us to win, man. This music is an opportunity for our people to really gain wealth and really to do. Everybody can't. Everybody's not going to be a real estate investor. You got niggas who couldn't pass math talking about forex. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's 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 so many quick get rich schemes and ebooks and e marketing and podcasters and YouTubers out there and like nah, man. Some people, it's, it's cool if you want to rap. It's cool if you want to sing. It's cool if you want to be a producer, but fall in love with the business side of it. So we try to emphasize, just get these business things right first. The bare minimum. I'm not asking you to do anything other than the things you need to at least start the process of making money in your career. Wow, guys, thank you so much, guys. That was Derek McKinney. And please, please, please go over to your Instagram and follow Loud Fest TX. That's L O U D S um, F E S T T X. Loud L O U D F E S T T X. And in order to interact with Frank Mosley, the third, you want to follow Sky. That's S K Y I V underscore records. Um, guys. Thank you so much, Frank. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Derek. And I put those two together because they're both independent label owners and both of them do the same thing. They do not have major investors. Everything that they have in life goes into this entity and it goes into you. And so they're not holding events, charging you to get on the stage so that they can fund their artist mm -hmm. and so that they can give the the imaginary $100,000 record deal to their artist that their artist is never going to get because it does not really exist. They're actually investing in you and your brain. But the other part of it is if they put one foot forward, you got to put two. So you can't expect Derek or Frank to invest a thousand dollars in you and you invest it zero. You need to match their investment or double their investment. So instead of now $2,000 that you should have, you got $3,000, okay? So I want you to understand that. So now Derek talked about you needing a bio at the minimum, guys. I have, I've met so many people um, and I'm going to pick on one of my great friends from St. Louis, C4. He's in here now. And he told me, well, Miss Lily, I got 300 songs. I said, well, where's your bio, baby? Uh. So we're going to move to Sheena. And Sheena is one of the people that I like her. But uh, sometimes I'm with Derek. When, when it gets to the realm of public relations, um that 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 word publicist it 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 makes me itch i'm a little allergic to it i need a little bit of benadryl you know when it comes to that word so shana is going to speak to you from a publicist who is actually doing the work and who isn't just doing the work because she wants to be famous she's going to speak to you about what a publicist does why a publicist is important, but also about the importance of that EPK, you know, having that bio, having that one sheet, you know, having um, a good SEO. Shana, please. Hey, hey, hey. So <laughs> what is a publicist? I can tell you, first and foremost, a publicist is not a manager. We are not your day-to-day -day person. That is not when you come to us when you need to be booked for for a show you don't come to us when you need somebody to answer your calls and your emails we are not assistants that's not what we do we are about the relationships with the media and what do we need in order to help sell you to the media right to help sell your image to the media do you even know who you are because <laughs> sometimes they think we are therapists too we're not that either <laughs> We're not your therapist either. We'll talk to you from time to time, but we are not your therapist. 
So Derek spoke about bio and, and everything, all the little assets that you need. And we, we actually call that an EPK. And for those of the, that do not know, that is an electronic press kit. That is when you are able to pull in your bio, your photos, any video links, any press and reviews that you have. Hopefully you do have some press before you come to a publicist. And then also some highlights and achievements. Did you win any awards? Were you somewhere that get, did a give back? Are you a part of your community? Um, that's really important to actually validate who you are. Then we also have your social media links. If you have, you should have your social media links. And then also your contact and representation information. And these are just the key aspects. There's only seven things you absolutely need in your electronic press kit. And yes, how often are we troubled with talking about ourselves? So that's when they come and they, talk, they come and speak to us. We want to grab all of your assets and organize it in an aesthetic, a specific aesthetic, so that it's easier for whoever we're going to send it to within the media. We are media focused. We are not supposed to be focused on ourselves. We are really we have relationships with newspapers, television, um, radio stations, as well as all of the new types of media, right? The podcasts and the IG live people and things like that. Some of them are reputable, others are not. But publicists usually vet these people beforehand when we're able to represent you in a specific industry. And I find that a lot of artists, because this is why I was so shy about going, not shy, I was irritated by going back into the, middle, the, the music industry for public relations because they don't want to do the work. Um, I get it. You have to go into the studio. You're in the studio day and night. I get it. You're working so that you could pay for your studio time. I understand you may have some family or whatever. You have other life things that are happening. But when are you going to pour into the complete package of who you are? When are you going to say, oh, can, can I actually make this money here and organize your calendar? Artists are all over the place. I live with two. I get it. I understand. They, they're all over the place. They want to be able to do here, there, and everywhere. Squirrel. But we need to get you focused. <laughs> y'all laughing. I know, I know y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we need to get you focused so that we can actually tell the public and tell people in the media of who you are, what have you done, and how, give us an hour of your time every week, if we can do that for, for three weeks, an hour of your time. Set aside that time so that we can really vet out the key information that's needed to build your press kit. Nobody knows who you are. It's just that simple. Nobody knows who you are. And then when once we... <laughs> Hood rich is not rich. I'm sorry, it's not. Hood rich is not rich. Sorry, wait, wait, wait. So, so what you're saying is okay. Hold on, hold on. So what you're saying is, I'm not gonna blow just because my crew say I make fire music because everybody's ear isn't attuned to what I'm making. Every market isn't for what I'm making. I need somebody that can do market research. Yes. I need somebody that can tell my story. But in order for me to get somebody to tell my story, I need to know my story. Is that what you're you saying? You need to know your story, boo. You need to know your story. Oh, you tell your story. Part of your story got to be real. And we're not borrowing stories here. That's not what we're doing. That is not we're what not? we're doing. Because we got to, no, we're not. Oh, okay. Let somebody know you. You're going to make it on somebody's stage. They're going to be like, wait a minute. That's John John from down the street. <laughs> okay okay right? carry on carry on <laughs> okay so a lot of the fictitious things that you do see um like the big chains <laughs> and the nice cars and you know throwing them dollars up and i guarantee you i have been on set with a few artists in the past there's probably like 200 dollar bills and the rest of them are singles there's this thing called video editing <laughs> that makes all the ones look like hundreds. Okay, there's times where we have to borrow cars from luxury, luxury places like luxury car rentals. Like I'm, I'm, I'm listen, we did an enterprise one time. Um, so <laughs> we did an enterprise one time. 
these artists, everything you see in these TV, the TV shows and things, even MTV Cribs that now I'm, I'm dating myself, but <laughs> MTV Cribs, they had these lavish houses. Those were not necessarily their homes. Ask them to go cook something in the kitchen. They didn't know where to go. They didn't know what to do. Ask them where the pantry at. They didn't know where to go, where the snacks. This is what's called an image. This is an image. And Derek spoke to this image as well with all of the, the, the track music and, and all of this wannabe rah-rah stuff. That is, that is definitely not my scene. <laughs> that is not my scene. Um, when we have to have all of the trucks and the depression that's being sold to our, our, our people. It's literally selling death on a stick right now. That's what we're doing. We're selling, we're not even selling it. It's being given away in the type of music that is being allowed. And so when we see many of these images, this is called conditioning. And within this conditioning, there's an apathy to anything that really would be self-harm to us in our mind, in our body, in our spirit. We vet the people that we work out, what we work with, um, since we are a Christian-based public relations agency, and yes, we do work with everybody, but we can't work with you if you're shooting guns. We can't work with you in smoking weed. We can't work with you if you are out here demeaning women, our beautiful Black queens, Black and brown women, um, some of the little, little the snow bunnies too, but um, <laughs> But if we are out here demeaning our women, if we're out here, you know, um, we say, you know, oh, thank God on, a, on an award show on one day. And then the next day we're out here slapping our spouse. We don't do that. Like, that's not something that we we actually are the protectors of your image, meaning we're going to catch you before you get to that point. We're going to catch you before that. Or it's like, listen, baby, you need to make this make a 360 on this so that we can actually turn you around gather your image and really provide people with the true person that you are. And if we can't do that, we cannot work with you. We cannot market you. We cannot brand you. We cannot speak to our connections that we've built over the many years of being in this industry and represent you. That's not what we're going to do. And you can ask my son about that because I do not represent him. Woo! So, all right. So, Sheena, um, as we began to transition, because we're going to transition into Mr. Terry. So basically what I hear you saying is as a publicist, um, it is important for you to have some QT with the artist because you take time to get to know the artist before you can actually build their portfolio to tell their story. Um, so basically it's almost like a doctor's appointment. And if you don't have insurance, it's going to cost more than if you have insurance. So basically, guys, what that means is the next time you go and pay $500 to somebody to get on their stage because they tell you that Def Jam going to be there and they're going to be signing people on the spot, call Sheena, call Sheena and say, look, I got $500. What can I do with this? Will this $500 get my portfolio? Call me, call Frank, call Derek. Call us and ask, you know, ask, what can I do with this? And I want to say this. There are publicists out there that are beating people over the head for simple work that we can do in five minutes. Five uh -oh. to ten minutes. Uh -oh. Do not, do not pay $3,000 for an EPK. Do not. Don't do it. Don't do it. There are publicists that are more, more careful with their own image than they are with their, with their, with their clients. They will take your money and run. And we already seen one that came in out in the news. Uh, uh, oh, <clears throat> cool. Yeah, that cool. yeah. was in the news. And people warned about this person and what their business practices were. But if you don't listen, you get got. And now I'm telling you again: do not pay three thousand dollars for a EPK. Derek has a free option as well. But if you want something else that's more of a professional look, don't. Just make sure you hit one of us up. We know what you need. Absolutely. <laughs> like we do. And I'm not, I'm not a hog on anything. I will help you be like, baby, you can do that for free. Absolutely. You can definitely do that for free. Don't ask me to do that. You can do that for free. And I'll show you how to do it. Woo wee. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's getting hot in here, but ain't nobody taking off no clothes now. 
All right. Sheena, thank you so much. Guys, Sheena Palmer, SCP underscore LLC on Instagram. Hit her up. She is utterly amazing. Now, we're going to move into talking with Mr. Terry Moore. I'm going to let him introduce himself because he is probably the one out of this bunch that I am going to hail, the mogul, the guru. Um, I don't want to date him because um, he, he look good, y'all. He still look real good. But, <laughs> baby, he done been out here in these streets. Mr. Terry, introduce yourself again and holler at everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm uh, 58 years young. I'll be 59 this year. Uh, so I appreciate the comment. Um, I, I'm a bullet. But first of all, I, I want to be respectful of the time. How, how much time do I have? You wow. good because you actually have a good 15 minutes. And then um, all of my independent artists watching, make sure that y'all are in the comments because the last few minutes, it's going to be y'all opportunity to vent. We want you to vent and let us know what are you sick and damn tired of and you want to know if we can help you fix it. Okay, cool. So I appreciate that. So a little bit about my background. Uh, I've got to get a shout out to a couple of people that didn't, didn't give a shout out to me before. But uh, I got involved in the music industry in 1986. MC Search from the group Third Base was one of the first people to help me get started. So shout out to Search, shout out to Nelson George, uh, Cynthia Horner from Right On Magazine. Uh, I hooked up with a little record label called First Priority Music out of Brooklyn, New York. Uh, MC Light was the first female rapper on the label, uh, which is ironically MC Light and DJ K-Rock. Uh, I'm Terry Moore. MC Light is Lana Moore, and DJ K-Rock is Kenneth Moore. So I know K-Rock is my cousin. I grew up with K-Rock. We're still trying to figure out uh, what the connection is with Lana, with uh, Light. But uh, when I got involved with the, the, the hip hop industry back in Brooklyn and Queens, I tell people I came in on the second wave of hip hop. The first wave of hip hop in New York was, uh, was Grandmaster Flash and Love Buck Starsky and, and those groups. And then I came in on the second wave, which was MC Light, KRS-One when he was with Boogie Down Production. Uh, I remember uh, working with Puffy when he was uh, at an intern at Uptown. So I came in on the second wave of that, uh, Latifah, when she first signed with, with Tommy Boy Records. And um, so I say all that to say is that um, the, the biggest thing that I see that the 90, 90 to 95% of the people in the music industry, whether they're an artist or a group or independent artist or going for a record label, they make probably, I, I jotted it down quick, so 10 bullet points that I'm going to run off. First of all, they're not consistent. You can't wake up today and decide you want to be an artist and then take three weeks off and then jump back in a month later and tell everybody, yeah, I'm in the music industry. If you're not consistent, you have to work this business. Uh, there's an old saying, if you work it like a hobby, it'll pay you like a hobby. If you work it like a business, it'll pay you like a business. Most of the people in the music industry are too part-time in this. Um, they just run around like they, like they like the idea of saying, oh, I'm in the music industry when they're really not. Number two, come with a budget. Don't do this business if you don't have a budget. I can't tell you how many people told me like, listen, when I blow up, you're gonna blow up. When I get paid, you're gonna get paid. I'm 58 years old. I, listen, I'm not doing anything without a budget. So you gotta come to me with a budget. And the majority of artists, when they sit down, they don't have a monthly expenses. They don't, they're not running their, their music career like a business. They don't know how much, okay, I need X amount of money every month for studio time. Let me put that to the side. I need X amount of money for my pictures. Let me put that to the side. Oh, my man Derek is having a convention in June. June. Loud. Okay, how much is that? Uh, 250? Let me start preparing for that now. Let me, let me, listen, let me, like that. Um, they don't have a budget. And then what's happening with a lot of artists is they're basically running their business as if it's a hobby. Uh, so number three, business of music. It's called the music business for a reason. And I've had a lot of artists tell me, I don't want to learn about the business. I just want to make music. That's when it's a hobby. You have to learn the business. I cannot stress to people enough that this is a business. You need to have somebody negotiating contract. You need to have somebody in there that understands the terms of business. You know, 
I, I'll, I'll tell you a couple of things that I was thinking about as far as the business of music. Everybody knows Will Smith, but nobody knows James Lasseter. Everybody knows Latifah, but nobody knows Shaquem. So when I'm talking to a lot of my clients, when I do consulting, I tell them you can literally be on the elevator with Sylvia Rohn and have no idea that Sylvia Rohn. And you lose out an opportunity because you're so focused on the person in front of the cameras that you pay no attention to the people on back of the cameras. And you have to learn your history. No matter what industry you get into, you have to know who came before you because those people will pave the way. Sylvia Rohn was the first black woman to ever own a, a major record label. You know, James Lasseter started out as Will Smith road manager before they became business partners. So Kim and Latifah went to high school together. And so Nat Robinson, who I worked with at First Priority Music started the record label because Milk and Giz, who did the, the number one hip hop sample song, Top Billing, which has been sampled over 300 times, they were going for record deals and the, the deals were so shady that Nat Robinson said, you know what, I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna quit being a, a tech guy at IBM and start my own record label for my boys. And it became First Priority Music, got a distribution deal with Atlantic Records. So you got to learn the business of music. Uh, there's so, many, so much information out there that I did not have when I started my music career in 1986. Literally, there's no excuse to jump on the internet, jump on YouTube to learn about the business of music to go to some of these conferences and learn. And I paid thousands of dollars. I wish somebody would send me an email saying that they charged me $3,000 for something to, to walk me into a record label to meet with an executive. Like, are you kidding me? I can get $3,000. Um, no team. Number four, I wrote down no team. A lot of people in industry are trying to be the publicist, the manager, the booking agency, the the marketing person, the social media person, and that leads to number one, you're no longer consistent because you got yourself spread out. You're doing things you have no knowledge of. You're trying to be a manager, you have no knowledge of being a manager. You're trying to be uh, a marketing person in social media, you have no idea what a social media, you're just trying to do a PR, but you have no idea what a press release is. So you have to have a team, okay? Gotta have a team. Uh, number five, probably one of my biggest pet peeves, I do legal shield. Uh, I can get a, an artist on a, have an, a legal team for 45 bucks a month, $49 a month. They'd rather take that money and spend it on studio time and then sign a bad contract where they lose everything. Which to me makes no sense. It's like, listen, I understand you can't afford three or $400 an hour for an attorney, I get that. But if I can offer you an alternative and you wind up canceling after two months because you haven't used it. And then on that third and fourth month, you get a contract and you say, oh, I'm just gonna sign it anyway. And then wind up losing your, your publishing. That to me is probably one of the worst decisions. I have a friend of mine who's an entertainment attorney, uh, Marvin Arrington, who's pretty big in Atlanta. And I remember asking Marvin one time, what, is, what, what do you spend most of your time doing? He said, getting people out of bad contracts. That's what he spends most of his time doing. Uh, number six, don't know the history, I just talked a little bit about that. But if you're in hip hop and you can't tell me who Nelson George is or Ted Demi is, if you are an R&B and can't tell me who Gene Baylor is with Jane, then you don't know your history. You can't come into this game and not know the history of who got you to where you're at. Because again, Gene Baylor, who was with um, Jane, one of the hottest groups back in the 80s, her and her husband, they killing it at jazz. They just been nominated for Grammys and doing things left and right. And if you don't even know when you're talking to, oh, Gene Baylor, congratulations on all your work. You know, you just, you're killing it in jazz market and you're just doing so fast. And she's looking at you like, but you know, I've been doing this for like 30 something years. Yeah, so know your history. Number seven, no website. This is another bit a pet peeve of mine because I can remember back in the days with MySpace, when I used to ask an artist, well, what's, what's your website? Oh, well, I'm on MySpace. And I'd say, well, MySpace is not a website. Now, where's MySpace now? And all those contacts that you had on MySpace, all those contacts are gone. Now people are acting like Facebook and Instagram is their website. You need an actual website because forbid that Facebook shuts down tomorrow, 
or IG shuts down them all, all those connections that you've made, you've lost them because you did not take that from point A to point B. Majority of people are terrible. Number 10, I'm sort of jumping to number nine. But majority of people are terrible when it comes to social media. I got people blowing up my inbox now just sending me music. No, hello, how you doing? What's your name? Can you tell me a little? They sending me music like, why? Why are you sending me music? And y'all really want to get on. But you don't even know what I do. <laughs> it's like, why are you sending me? It's the equivalent of me standing in the bathroom and you handing me a cassette tape while I'm using the bathroom. And that's what getting a, in, uh, an unsolicited inbox uh, message where you're just sending me your music. No building, no rapport. Hey, Mr. Moore, I see your background in music. Hey, we'd really love to set up a time with you, tell you a little bit about what I... Build that rapport first before you send me any music. If you meet James Lasseter at a convention or you meet, um, I'm trying to think it's uh, Kevin Lyles or somebody at a convention, don't walk up to them and first thing you say is, hey, listen, I'm an artist and I'd love to show you my music and you're shoving a, uh, some product in their hands. Get to know that person. Hey, listen, I know your background. I know, Puffy, that you started out working at Uptown Records for free under Andre Harrell. I know that you helped create Jodeci and Mary J. Bly. I understand you started out as an intern before you went to Clive Davis and set up Bad Boy. Have some history with them. Let them know that, hey, I know exactly who you are. And last but not least, I got on my list here, technology. When I got involved in the music industry, I literally sat down with the yellow pages and flipped album covers over. So I'm looking at my albums now. And I would flip them over, read the person's name on the back of the album, call the record label, and ask for that person trying to get put on, hey, I'm, I'm willing to work for free. I worked for a recording studio for about a year from 12 in the afternoon on Sunday to 12 at night for one year without getting paid. I opened up the studio, closed the studio, answered the, the, uh, the phone, went and got food. I had the opportunity to work with Yoko Ono, who used to be married to John Lennon. I worked with uh, Brenda K. Starr, who discovered Mariah Carey, and I worked with Roy Ayer, but I got, I got knowledge from that. But then when after that, I, I left the recording studio and went work for Billboard magazine, only because I called Harry Michelle at Billboard for like six months. Hey, Harry, you got anything? No, Terry, call back in a week. Call back in a week. Hey, Harry, you got anything? Six months later, he finally said, hey, do you want to come in and work a day and see how it goes? And I wound up working for Billboard for almost a year before going on the first priority music. But I had to do that working from Yellow Pages. I didn't have the internet. I didn't have the cell phone. You guys have so much access to literally pull somebody's name up and say so-and-so from so-and-so record label or so-and-so, so -and, -so, and reach out to them and say, hey, listen, I'm trying to get put on, but I like to build a report first. I like to take somebody out to dinner. If you, if you, I mentioned no budget, have a budget where you just take people out to eat. Like, listen, I just want to pick your brain. Can I take you out to lunch? Can I take you out to dinner? Because if you constantly hear my music, check my music out. Hey, can you take my listen to my music? And hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to blow up. What it sounds like, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me without, Absolutely. hey, can I offer you something? I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. Well, no, Mr. Moore, I actually was going to interject. I want to go back to when you said, um, you know, you were flipping the albums or the records over and getting the name. Guys, People that are making decisions are not on Instagram as Michael underscore Atlantic Records or Jason underscore Def Jams. Stop thinking that these inboxes are real. Go over to LinkedIn. Every independent creator should have a LinkedIn. The people that make the decisions, they are on LinkedIn. Go to Atlantic's website. Look and see who their executives are. And I guarantee you, their executives are not in all of these major weekends that you are spending your money going to. Okay? The majors that is. And you have to start to understand the difference between these record labels in our community, I'm going to say, and the majors. Because they are two totally different things. And I need you to understand that. So I might be close to a label and because y'all know my name, 
they're going to tell you that the record label except for such and such is going to be there. And they just talking about me because y'all know me. Y'all know I'm affiliated with such and such. So y'all think I can make a decision and put you on. Stop getting bamboozled. Stop getting bamboozled. Shana, Shana, I think Shana wanted to say something. Go ahead, Shana. Oh, because Terry, you touched on that work ethic right there. There is this work ethic is I'm going to go to the studio and then I'm just going to go ahead and, and blow up and be the next Migos. That is literally what a lot of these, I don't know what you want to call them because maybe they are artists. I mean, they have an artistic nature, but art takes work. It takes work. The person who is actually working at their craft, who's actually investing their time and their money because they believe in their craft, they are the ones that are going to make it. And that is not, oh, put me on. That is not a happenstance. That is the hours and days and possibly even years for some people who perfect their craft and they want to build these relationships and they're solid relationships. These are not flim flam relationships. These are, oh, when's the barbecue type relationships? These are the, I have, I have your pot roast in the oven, like type of, type of relationships. These are the, oh, meet us at our spot. If you ain't got a spot with that person, you don't know them. You don't know them. You don't know, know them somebody. And, and the pictures, the pictures, guys. Stop thinking just because these people are taking pictures with all these celebrities that they know them. I tell people this all the time. There was a reason I walk around with multiple hello devices. I don't need to take a picture with a person because the person that you're taking a picture with, nine times out of 10, I can pick up the phone and call them and never took a picture with them a day in my life. Because like Terry said, you have to build relationships. You have to build relationships. The key to this thing, honestly, is relationship, relationship, relationship. And, and Terry, it goes back to everything that you said. You cannot build the relationship with Terry by dropping a link in his inbox. Number one, he probably not going to check it to next week because he's not checking for his inbox. He's checking for his email. Number two, he probably like, well, what the hell is this? This is spam. I'm not going to click on it because my phone will get a virus. And number three, that is not how you do business. Find people's emails, email them, introduce yourself. Hello, my name is such and such. My artist name is, because y'all got to stop living in y'all artistry. Because a whole lot of y'all walk around here with multiple personality disorder and don't can know I, who you are. Can, um, can I say can something real quick? Can come back to Laura, because I'm getting fired up. Uh, I want to go back to what Sheena was saying about work ethics, and it just made me think of when I was working with light. Um, I could tell you from experience that, you know, we we drove to some of the shadiest clubs, club, clubs that were looking like they were falling apart. We we were put in some of the, the shadiest hotels. I remember one time we went to a hotel, and DJ Coco Chanel was also uh, someone that I worked with a lot when she was with the Kings of Swings, but... I remember one time we went to a hotel that was so bad they had graffiti all on the wall. And in one of the rooms, they literally had a chalk outline, like somebody had died in the room or something like that. Uh, I remember one time when a uh, light had to perform on tables and we had to push the tables together and hold the tables. That was her stage. So unfortunately, and you know, a lot of artists, they don't want to do that now. They're like, well, I'm not doing all of that. Why am I doing that? And, you know, yeah, we, we did some... Back in the day, we definitely did some stuff that a lot of artists don't want to do today. So I'll turn it back over you. Wow. So guys, um, before we open it up, because first of all, let me shout out, the whole loud music team is in here. Like, so I mean, all of them just showed up. That's when you know you're doing something right. Derek, your whole team can carry them up in here. Um, but before we before we let people, you know, raise their hands and vent, because we want you to vent and tell us what's, what are the problems. I want you to understand what you just got in this hour. To sit, I'm going to start with Frank. To sit down and talk to Frank, you get 30 minutes between $50 and $100. For Shana, you're looking at between three to $500. For Derek, you're looking at about three to five hundred dollars for Mr. Terry. Eh, you're probably looking at about a, a G. 
Do y'all realize y'all literally just got over $5,000 worth of time for nothing? And why? Because we are tired of seeing you run into bullshit. We are tired of you talking to people that look good on social media, that's buying all these big chains from the same people. And then, because I go to the flea market, I see some of your favorite celebrities on Sunday afternoons in the flea market because they're not buying the real stuff. That's how they keep their money. So if you really want to go try to meet somebody and get on, go to the flea market on a Sunday. And you know why they go on Sunday between five and seven? Because no one's in there to see them and try to take pictures with them. Ask me how I know. Because once again, I don't have to walk around taking pictures with people so people will think that I'm in some position that I'm not. Build relationships with people. And you'll get invited to the spot. Also, Stop running behind publicists who are using their position to build their self-esteem and self-worth. Mm. You're not going to get anywhere. If your publicist is trying to be on, they can't help you with anything because they too busy <laughs> trying to do what they need to do to make themselves look good. I'll tell anybody under the sound of my voice, Y'all do what y'all can, but I do what I want to because I'm not here to be liked. But I will dog on be respected because I love people. I love the business. And over here on this platform, we operate in the spirit of integrity. If you don't have it, we will try our darndest to work with you. But let me tell you something. Don't have it for us. And then I catch your ass out back buying your weed and getting your bottles and buying your girl this or you're buying your man that because then we're going to have a problem. And you will never, ever have access to this family again. And I want you to understand something. Once I warn you, once we warn you, once we give you the jewels and you still continue to operate in ignorance, we have no use for you. We are tired of doing disability work you go out and get crippled by the moguls and the plugs and the guru well guess what you got the electric company right here and you won't even plug in because you want to be the plug well the plug has to plug into the source of power that is given by the electric company and we are right here so artists, independent artists, anybody that wants to say something, if you have a question, if you have an issue, if your heart is just hurting right now, I want you to raise your hand because this is your opportunity to speak or forever hold your peace. Lord, y'all quiet in the spirit. Come on, no, Derek. Come I'm on. Here. Oh, wait a minute, Cortez. Go ahead, Cortez. Oh, uh my fault. I'm sorry. I'm, you know, I really don't know how to do Zoom. I just learned how to do this. But it's all right. You here. A lot of things you were saying, a lot of things that y'all was saying, Derek was saying, Frank was saying, the uh, lady, all that. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know nothing. I just like, it's not a hobby because that's what I get my, uh, that's, that's what releases me. That's what I fight for. That's what I love to do. So it's not a hobby. I want to turn it into a, a business. I do. Because this is what I love to do. This is my passion. Uh, music. Yeah, I got a lot of music. You spoke about that. I do, and I don't know what to do with it. So I'm trying. I book shows. I try to do what I can. And I didn't been railroaded and messed up before. So I'm. that's why I'm here. I'm listening to everything y'all got to say. I don't have a bio. You always got on my butt about a bio. You told me about my portfolio. You, you know, you're giving me jewels. You giving me the game. Y'all giving me game right now. I'm listening. <laughs> hey, loud fest. I'm going to be there. But I still got to get my, the EPK. I ain't know nothing about that. That's some. Um... Are you on mute? You're on yeah, mute. I can't hear you. You're on mute. Okay. Let me just say real quick. Cortez is amazing. Um. He didn't have to reintroduce himself because we met in St. Louis at an event. And I don't 
don't know, one morning he just messaged me and he said, I need your help. And y'all, it was in all capital letters. And I was like, well, hold yes. on. What's going on? Because y'all know, off, off record, prior to, you know, a couple of months ago, I was a behavioral health practitioner. So when he said, I need your help, I'm like, hold up, player. I'm in, I'm in Georgia. I, I can't, I can't beat no crisis intervention specialist right now. But he was talking about his music. And, and it speaks to when you get to the point where you are, are you, you are sick and tired of being sick and tired. He is at that point. He is tired of being promised stuff. And he told me that he said, listen, I don't trust anybody. I'm listening to you, but I still don't trust you. And guess what? Because of that, I respect him so much more because he's letting me know I'm on guard because I don't trust you. I've been let down so much. I cannot trust you. Show me something. Show me something. So I said, well, guess what? I do you one better than this. We're going to put a panel together. It's going to be live yes. and it's going to be next Saturday at 12 noon, your time. That's what we're going to do. Because one thing about me, you tell me what I can't do. I'm going to show you what I can and a little bit more. So, boom, in your face, didn't we show you? That was. <laughs> <laughs> and you did that. Because I was about to say, the game, like, when I was in jail, I, I used to read all you need to know about the music business. Okay. But I still didn't understand. But the way y'all drop it off and give it to me, especially like, yo, your image and what you need to make a whole package and you got to put forth the effort, you got to put money down. For sure, you got to. To go anywhere, you got to have a that budget. I didn't okay. thought about that. It's, I'm, I'm really like, man, y'all can get it. Y'all can, like, y'all giving me game. Y'all <laughs> giving me real game. And it's this, like, man, for real. Absolutely. And that's what it's Come about. Correct. Thank you so Come much. Correct. Thank you so much, Cortez, for you Thank know for chiming man. in. Absolutely. Derek, please, because I know you, I know you was gonna have something to say, and then we're gonna come to back to Mr. Terry. So one of the things I was gonna say is like um, you know, we always keep talking about relationships, relationships, relationships. There's two things that I think is very important about relationships. The first thing is with a relate a relationship just means, and I and I and I tell people this, that just means you'll answer the phone or respond to the email when I reach out. It doesn't guarantee you that you're gonna do anything free, anything special, anything extra. The relationship strictly means there's an open line of communication. And in urban music, we've we've made relationships so casual to where everybody wanna be bro, sis, big homie, OG, unk, all of that, all of the pet names and shit. And, and that and that is a way for people to trick you out of your business. Like, don't let them treat you casual. And unfortunately, you're going to have, and I see it time and time and time and time again, where the head of a hip hop division is not black and or, or not even nowhere near from anywhere, but they're bro, they sis, they all of this, and they every pet name under the sun with you. But when they go to that boardroom, it's a whole nother conversation that they have when you're not around. So, Please repeat what you said, Derek. Please repeat what you said. Let, go hold, back hold, to hold, that. Hold on, hold on one second. So the key to the key is allowing the relationships to stay transactional. Everything does not have to be casual. Everybody does not have to be your friend. Everybody does not have to be cool. These are your coworkers. These are uh, 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 um, job peers, and that's it. And in hip hop and R and B, everybody thinks that the relationship means that you have to be bro and sis and homie and and, and and unk and OG and all the real cool shit. That, it, the minute we eliminate that and just handle the business, I think that will allow our relationships is going, that, that's what's gonna allow our relationships to be better and stronger because people know that when I call, I'm calling because there's some business attached. I'm, I'm calling, even if we shooting the shit during football season, they know, okay, there's something going on that Derek is going to, we're going to connect some dots on something. And it's not like, nah, I, I don't smoke. I drink every blue moon. So people know like if Derek is calling, the relationship is, if I hit J1, he going to answer. 
because you know Derek got something going on and we need to do something. The uh, the other part to having a, a good relationship is bring something to the table. Too often we network and we want to have a relationship where you don't offer anything. No, you can't. Having a relationship with me isn't having bringing me every idea under the sun that you haven't even developed. Like I always tell people, um, true story. I went out to New York and got with, met with some people over at SiriusXM. We've been communicating online for about a year and a half, two years. But I knew the relationship would never progress unless I went and sat in their face. I pulled up to an event. I didn't ask for anything. The ticket was one hundred and fifteen dollars to get in. I paid for me and my wife's ticket to get in. Um, I sat in the audience. I introduced myself. I was a 100% consumer. Well, once they realized um, who I was and we've had communications before, everything changed. Now they're all coming to my event in June. And so I brought something to the table. You know what I'm saying? Like, so bring something of value when you're networking. And I always offer, what can I do for you? What can I do to help you? I know what I want, but... Let me make sure that I help you meet your needs so now you're comfortable helping me meet mine. And too often, everybody wants to network and connect and build relationships, but you're not bringing anything of value to the table. And so when I don't respond or you don't get a call back or you don't get a response to your DM and because you're constantly sending all these different ideas or like you say, spamming or randomly just sending the music without a hello or a goodbye or my name is, I have no reason to answer because that five minutes that I spend listening to your song or talking to you or whatever, that's five minutes. I could, that I need those five minutes. I need every minute of my day. So as we, as we say the words, have a relationship and network, understand that that don't mean just go meet a bunch of people and blow them up. That means like, no, understanding what the relationship is. The relationship is you will call, you will respond, and then but you still got to have your ducks in a row. I have, like I say again, I have a relationship with Pandora. My artist, Fat Pimp, was featured. He dropped a new single. He was featured on the, uh, the cover of their Southern Music Playlist, 5.1 million subscribers or followers. But although I have a relationship with J1, I did my checklist. Everything was registered properly. We promoted everything. I sent over the pitch deck. I treated it as if I had never met him a day in my life. So I respected his position at the company to not jeopardize what he had going on for the strength of a homie. Like, no, I'm going to handle business like I would do anybody else, especially because it's a brother sitting in that seat. If it was a white dude sitting in that seat, y'all would be, hello, how you doing today, sir? Like, no, I'm going to respect him the exact same way. And I'm going to give him a reason to want to have a relationship and a reason to want to rock with me. And I think too often in this industry, regardless of what level, people don't give you a reason to support them. They don't bring any value to the table. Like, you know what? Yes, we do. We need to connect these dots and establish this network. So my suggestion would be to anybody listening and to all of us executives in building relationships, just know the relationship means the other person is going to answer and in networking offer before you ask. And that's, that's just my thing. Wow. Derek. Oh my God. That was absolutely. That's, that's it. All you have to remember, there is an art to networking and in order to build sustainable and viable relationships, offer before you ask that's amazing we do have some comments over on social media and this comes from um <clears throat> a young lady and she's pretty seasoned in the game she even said yeah i'm in my 50s so i know what mr terry was saying when he was talking about the yellow pages i don't care i'm in my 30s and i know my mom and dad made me use the yellow pages a lot so trust me i get it <laughs> but this is one of the things it's so interesting she said this and this is the best piece of free game i can give you she said, when you go to these award shows, weekends, events, and all this other stuff, attend the conferences and stop trying to perform. What did Derek just say? Derek said he bought a ticket to go somewhere, but I'm going to take it a step further. Stop paying to perform all the time. Go to these events and set up as a vendor. If I can't give you anything else, I'm going to give you this. And my significant other taught me this. Go to these events as a vendor Set up your backdrop, 
set up some QR codes, have people sample or review your song, have them download it, and give you a review right there, have your little camera set up. That's all you got to do. So instead of paying $500 to get on this Boosie stage or this Cardi B stage or this QC stage, pay $200 or $150 to be a vendor and you there for three days. You get your music downloaded. Now you got people actually listening to it and you getting content. But y'all just want to be seen because you think somebody going to put you on. Anyways, do we have any other independents um, that have something that they would like to say? Anybody? Hello, can anybody, everybody hear me? We can hear you, music. Please speak. How you doing? I'm Music Matisse. Um, for those of you who don't know, I want to send a shout out to the Loud Music Group. Um, my boy, All Star Chuck, was the one that sent me the invite. Um, a lot of good information on here. But my experience is I'm currently partnered with... Um, St. Charles, SMG Solo Music Group, E40's uncle. And we've got a tall task in hand. We've got history. We've got uh, Billboard, you know, in our past, heavy. JT, um, the bigger figure. We've got Marvelous. We've got so much stuff. And Chuck and I, over the past couple of years, have been talking and just exchanging ideas. But I agree with a lot of what I've heard. Um, I think we're in a state where these artists... Either they're going to get this because timing is crucial with hip hop being 50 years old or they're not. I have spent and got receipts on Lord knows how many artists over the past 30 plus years <laughs> um, just being behind the scenes. And it's, it's allowed me to be the quiet person in the room, but I've made some connections. I've made and have information. I, I have quite a few things at my disposal, but I find it interesting that to me, it's like these kids today, they don't care. You, you can buy them off with a chain, um, a bag of maybe 20 grand. And I'm like, Terry, for me, this has been my life. I grew up in this when it was nothing. I remember even in New York growing up, we didn't have a hip hop radio station. Hot 97 was still 20, 25 years away back then. So it's like when I run into people and you tell me that you're an artist, again, I can go back to what Terry said. What's your knowledge of this business? And he's, he's talking about uh, uh, Gene and people like that. I'm a little more intricate. I want to know who you know that's been sitting behind the board. Who's the best engineer in the business? Period. Don't talk to me about just hip hop. Talk to me about music because that's the business you in. You know, and you alluded to it as well. When you talk money, they won't have it to put in themselves, but they want you to put your money into them. But when you see them, I mean, you got the $1,000 sneakers on, you got the $750 belt, you got this and that and the other. But if I lay out a program and I just went through this, and Chuck can verify it, I just went through this with six artists three years ago. I'm down to one on the management side. You know why? Because for two and a half years, this is the icing on the cake after all these years of putting money into this business. I run you through your entire setup. Everything from SoundCloud, BMI, your PRO registration, everything came up with all kinds of scenarios. Well, if it's six of y'all, y'all put in $100 a month and, and the label can match that towards, you know, and start off small. Because see, that's another thing. We have this illusion that everybody's going to be a bad boy, a death row. Everybody's going to be a Rockefeller. But we haven't paid attention to the smaller labels that were still very successful in this game. You know, and that's the pocket we in. I don't have to be at the forefront. I don't have to be uh, um, the label that everyone goes to that's talked about. But it's still plenty of money, plenty of avenues, plenty of business strategies that you can use. But I think they're so consumed. You know, the first thing they'll tell you is, well, I don't know how to register for PRO. But if I'm just sitting here spending three or four weeks teaching you for free, I'm not charging you. You don't know how to do it. I always hit them with the analogy. Well, the first time you smoked a blunt, did you know how to roll it? But your ass rolled backwards now, blindfolded with one hand. You know, so that part can be frustrating. And I see and hear on all these different conferences that I'm on. And, you know, we as business owners, as managers, we are frustrated, you know, because most of us are going to make it as far as just being able to support ourselves. We have careers. We've got we're long in the tooth with careers. We're going to get paid every two weeks, every week, whatever the situation is. And most of us, when you get 50 and above, most of these jobs that we're in in these careers, we're making pretty decent money with or without the headache of you. 
And I think until they start to really realize this is more than just being seen, as everyone on the panel noted, it's how you articulate, it's how you communicate. You know, you don't want to pay for a lawyer, no matter how cheap it is, you don't want to do that. But you'll run right into that label and your articulation in the meeting is that of somebody who's not supposed to be talking to any of these CEOs, VPs, a &Rs. You know, you don't want to handle your business because it's more important for you to be seen to get temporary likes on the gram or social media, you know, so to everybody that's still hanging in there, particularly on this call, um, a lot of you, I'm aware of a lot of your situations more than you might realize, because like I said, I'm always the guy that's in the background, seldom seen, but I'm connected in my own way under underground independently, and I'm cool with that. But just be encouraged as, as managers, as officials, producers, whether you're new label owners, because this is going to be what you make it to be. You know what I mean? I'm into the music business, not just hip hop. I was part of hip hop from the very beginning. I remember when in the Bronx, we didn't have anything. I remember when it looked like Iraq and, and Palestine and different countries looked where everything was leveled. I remember when black radio stations in New York did not give a damn about this music. And something else I want to reiterate on too is our media. It amazes me that we have all these so-called experts in media on all these major platforms every day Everything can be accessible by the touch of a finger, but they don't do anything to actually correct situations, history, because I know they work for corporations. So it's not many of them are going to really be up front anyway. OK, but it's amazing how we still push this narrative. And you got artists out there that are doing it right now, that there was always this issue and this hate coming from New York. I could tell you point blank. That's a stone cold lie. The problem with New York was, and I've never heard none of these people mention it on their platforms. The problem with New York was New York was trying to figure it out. Y'all was coming to New York looking for deals. New York hadn't even figured it out. When, you, when they're, they're telling Easy e Master P and them to go back down south, Luke and all of them guys, that was the best thing they could have done. Because I heard someone say recently on a major platform, well, how come there are no uh, uh, Southern artists that are running labels in New York? Because the Southern artists went back home and created their own lane. That's why they, they, not, they don't need to run labels in New York. But when you look at the labels in New York, and if I'm wrong, I will gladly listen to somebody else's opinion. How many African-American people with major labels in, in any city, okay, at the majors have signing authority, can actually sign a check without it having to go to payroll and accounting to get their approval via the CEO or some other official? You know what I'm saying? But these are truths. When you sit across the table from me on a microphone and I'm interviewing you, I should have knowledge to be able to give you that insight. Say, nah, young brother, this is A, B, C, D, and E. And you talking to somebody that was born and bred in New York, raised in all five boroughs of that city when it wasn't nothing. But I would take the train. I would take the subway to go to Tower Records and Beach Street in Brooklyn, Tower Records in the Village, Hall of Music Hut. And you know what I'm in there buying? Not just what's around me. I'm in there buying the ghetto mafias in the PA. I'm in there buying the, 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 all, of, all those other groups, the Jim Crows and all these other groups that people didn't know. It wasn't that we didn't have that love. We had a love for everything. The media is portraying it and they always have been. And that burns me because I've been in this game, like I said, my whole life, this is my life. But when I don't see that these, these media people who have these major formats and on all these shows every day with all these views, there's so much misinformation that they don't know. And I can't understand how it is you're on a major format, you don't know what you're talking about, and you got Google at your fingertips. So obviously you didn't interview, or either rather you didn't do your proper research before you started talking that interview. And that leads to so much misinformation, miscommunication, mm -hmm. it doesn't progress us. Well, it's a clickbait society. And music, oh yes. my God, we definitely oh, yeah. have to, we're going to bring you back. So you need to just go on and drop your email. You will be on the panel the next time we do this. <laughs> um, but I want to say, let's. we're going to speak to that. And guys, we're going to start to um, wind up, but we have to speak to that. Let me, let me yes. help you understand something. And if you really want to get some knowledge about this, y'all can check out my new blog. It's called From the Eyes of an From Unconventional Media Correspondent. Because this is what it is. I have a very distinct issue that one of the major platforms that Black people run into to get information is the most negative platform for Black people and is run by a Black woman. Why is that? 
It's what music just said. Y'all got all these major media platforms, but everybody is running off of clickbait and numbers because the more bullshit that I can sell about my people, I'm going to get paid for it. Why? Because we continue to perpetuate ignorance and the disenfranchisement of us in our own communities. Hence why we're having this panel. Guys, if you don't understand what the purpose of this panel was for, let me run it back. It's because for me in my house, I'm sick of y'all always talking about what the white man is doing, yet you sit here and disenfranchise your own people with all this bullshit you selling them with all these stages and stuff. And you're not helping them. Derek has a, an amazing format. Why aren't you invested in his format? Oh, you know why? Because Derek got on his hoodie and his hat. Now, he do got a sneaker plug, so if you want some sneakers, you need to talk to him. But he not walking around with butt naked hoes. He not walking around with no big chains on. He not walking around with money to his ear. Because people that really got it don't want it. Because nine times out of ten, they swiping their debit card. Or that Black American Express. I'm just saying. So I need you to really understand, we have sat here today, right? We have given you so much information. And the other reason we did this was because I've seen in the past, and y'all know I'm in Atlanta, so I don't mind. Well, actually, no, hell no. I'm in Cobb County, y'all. I'm going to keep it above. I don't live in the city of Atlanta. I like where I live. Because I come in my house at night, and I ain't worried about the nothing. Door. Yep. I ain't worried about nothing but the doggone little circadias and shit to be running around. That's all I'm worried about. But in this area, um, shout out to Sky 4. Because let me tell you something about working for free. I met the CEO of Sky 4 Records, Frank, who is here. I met him virtually while I was living in Virginia. I met him just before COVID hit us. I worked with him virtually for almost a year. About two years later, I was moving to Georgia. And who moved me to Georgia? Sky 4 Records. Hands down. The rest of the story, you'll have to get on the off day. I say that to say, Derek said it. Terry said it. You got to work sometimes. Offer before you ask. I did what Derek said. I offered to assist. And guess what? I have been blessed ever since. This right here. C4 didn't ask me for anything, but I offered to do it. And look at what I've been blessed with. I was blessed to meet Terry Moore. I wouldn't have met, met Terry Moore if I wasn't doing this. I wouldn't have met music. So now we're building a tribe of people who care about the business of music and not just being seen or filling up an event space with a whole lot of damn people that don't know what the hell going on in the music business. So y'all keep being industry certified and verified with your meta verification. And we're going to continue to be licensed, credentialed, and certified by the knowledge that we have acquired through formal means and informal means. So if there's nobody else, any other independent artists that have something they want to say, I want to thank Sheena, Frank, Terry, Derek, and Music, you are honorary panelists because you came on here and you shut it down, baby, and we're going to go back to that history because you told the church. I'm a millennial, but I got a baby boomer spirit, and I know where you were going with your conversation, so I'm with you. Um, and in the spirit of this being the great Easter weekend, we're going to close out this session. I am a traditional Baptist girl, and where I come from, when we finish a meeting of the minds, we say, if all hearts and minds are clear, we will now adjourn this meeting. Guys, thank you so much. Hit me up for everybody's information. Um, I'm going to give you their IGs. I'm not giving you any other information. I will give you emails, but I like to you know, make sure it's okay with them first, because like I said, we have to teach you email etiquette. And so guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We will do this again. And remember, offer before you ask. Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen.